I was like, is that a man's voice I heard calling my name? This man going to see my breast? Hell no. So <laughs> I took my bag, pretended I was going outside to take a phone and then whew, that's how I went home. You know, here comes the worst part. My tumor was not on this part of the breast, but it was in my nipple inside. Inside the nipple, they had to take a nail. Can you imagine I was just standing there? They told me they have to take something like a nail. They dipped it inside my breast and then they pushed that. I think they were pushing the tumor in front so that they can know where to mark. To Welcome back again to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Lina Chamimo. If you're new yet, I do vlogs about travels, about cooking, about story time. And because of Corona, we're going to do a lot of story time. So guys, let's go back to the topic. And uh, today we're going to do a different thing, guys. And in this new video, it's all about... Gosh, I don't even know how to say it. Okay, let's go. So in 2013, I was diagnosed with breast tumor and I was just laughing because I, I, I didn't know it was that serious guys I didn't know it was something serious I need to be worried about my this video it's about how I discovered I had breast tumor so if you if you are a lady please remain here because this might be very important for you you know so seven years ago uh, 2013 I was, yeah, I was just there, I was a young lady, 23 years, and everything was new to me, you know, but the thing is, I was not looking for a baby, but all of a sudden, when you start having water coming out from my breast, water, and I was like, hey, what is not happening to me, why am I having water on my breast, so guys, it was on my right breast, this one. That's why today I wear I wore like this so that you guys can see I still have my breasts even though they did the operation. So let's go to the point. So then I asked about from my friends and then the, most of them were like, maybe you are pregnant. And then someone said, maybe it's the hormones, you know. So I was like, okay, let me wait, you know. Uh, but, but I knew I was not pregnant. So I knew maybe it was the hormones. I was not taking any medicine for of anything no but i knew maybe it's the hormones because i was getting older i was 23 you know so after six months i was still pressing my breast to see if something will come out after six months when i pressed hmm, i saw a very dark brown blood you know the br the blood which is old not you know the fresh blood is always red but now this is the black dark brown blood which is old it means something is not happening right in there and then later it was greenish yellowish i don't know it had green yellowish and uh, when i saw all those colors i was like what is not happening it was now clear water now it is a color i mean re re brown red yellow green what is not happening to my breast then i kept pressing this one was coming now nothing was coming out and this one was one which was having a problem to still uh, uh, bringing those fluids outside those secrets outside so i say no this is not happening to me and i just called my gynecologist i called her and told her i'm having this thing on my breast and i don't know what's not happening she told me to come to the office where she's working the doctor then i went to the doctor's praxis i went to the office and then she said she wants to see my breast. Luckily, you know, I, I, I always look for a female doctor. So she told me she wants to examine me. And then she did that mammogram. You know, when they place your breast on the, that machine and then they try and look for something. So she said she cannot see anything which is inside. But she, do, she doesn't understand why she, when she should, because she pressed too. And then those colors came out and then she said this must be something serious even though she can't see anything from the machine it means 
it must be something very very serious so she told me she's writing uh, an observation shy notice that of me she wrote me a transfer thing from her to the main hospital because in German you cannot just go to any hospital without uh, overvising shine. Oh my God, it's overvising shine in English. You can't go without um, a letter, a, a paper from the doctor saying you must be attended there in the hospital because she, she was not able to assist you. So I was given that paper from my gynecologist and then she told me, to, she wrote the, the hospital where I'm supposed to go to. And then me, I, I, I called, no, I didn't call, I just went there direct. So when I went there, they gave me an appointment that I should go there. Yo, so the days passed and after, I think after two months or three months, they, is when I went. And when I went there, I was called by a male doctor. I was like, oh my God, why must, must, why must I be attended by a male doctor? Guys, I ran back home. When that guy said, Line Chamimo, please, he said in the German, you know. I was like, is that a man's voice I heard calling my name? This man going to see my breast? Hell no. So <laughs> I took my bag, pretended I was going outside to take a phone, and then whew, that's how I went home. You know? This is a serious thing, but I said, because I cannot be attended by a man, it must be a woman. So I went back home and then I had to tell my mom, you know, I told my mom, this is, this, and this is happening to me. And when I went to the hospital, it was a man who was there. The man was supposed to handle my breast and do all those things. So I said, I told my mom, I cannot do such a thing. My mom said, this is very serious. You must go back to the hospital. Hmm. I was so stressed up and then I was so even embarrassed. I couldn't even go to that hospital. After after talking to my mom, I thought about it and then I decided, no, I'll, I'm going to press and see what comes out, if it, if it has healed on itself, because I was in denial, I didn't want this man to touch my breast, you know. So, what I did, I said, let me go and uh, press it again and see what will happen. So when I pressed it, each again, it, those things came out, then I said, no, what am I going to do? So I called my gynecologist again, and then I told her, you know, this is like two, three months later. I told her I want to come and see her because the breast is not getting better. And then she told me, come. So, and then I went to, the, to her, and then she asked me, did you go to the hospital? I told her, no, I could not find the hospital. You know, I had to lie <laughs> because it was so embarrassing for me. For me, it was very embarrassing for a man to see my breast, you know. So she told me, the net what you're doing is not good. So you have to be very serious with your breast because this is your, your health and it might kill you if you don't take care. What? Then I was like, is this thing so serious? You know me as all of us, I just thought it was something which is not even serious or anything. So when I saw my doctor was so serious, I decided to take this thing serious too. You know when I when you pre, when I pressed my breast there was nothing swollen or any pain there was nothing guys nothing was on my breast apart from this secret which, secret which was coming out this fluid which was coming out. So I say I must be clever now. So I decided to call she told me to go to another hospital different one. At least that one I said okay let me go. And this time I said, if it's a man, it's a I don't care what will happen, let me go. If you want to see my breast, I don't care. I just said, when the doctor told me it is very dangerous and it's, I, it can kill me. Hi. I became so afraid with, with only 23 years, about to die. I said, no, God, let it not happen to me. So I went to the hospital, which the doctor wrote there. And I was told to wait for like 30 minutes. I was waiting outside and then they called me. And then the doctor said he wants to examine me. So I went to that mammogram, that machine. They placed both of my breasts there. You know, when they press the breast, it becomes so flat like this. You know, you never have breasts which are here again unless you do an operation. 
my my breasts the day they got bad when they were pressed like this on that machine both of them were and it becomes flat guys i'm not, i'm going to show you how that machine looks like that the the mammogram machine and uh, that's why they pressed uh, they placed my breast you know that's why they placed my breast inside and uh, guys if you can do it go and do the doctor came and called me after those 30 minutes he told me now i can go in and then he took me to one room he applied that gel on my breast and then he did a scan first and then he said you know what i mean but they i was treated by the the oba chef that was the the biggest chef of the that operation room so that's the one who was on was checking that thing and then he said yeah i can see something he saw the tumor has grown big and he said lynette we must operate you if you don't operate you this thing it will spread and become cancer wow when i just said the word cancer i told him doctor do anything you wish with this breast just do anything the main point is that i don't develop this cancer on my breast so the doctor said i should go outside and then he went and arranged the papers and then he came out again and called me and told me the next be operated as soon as possible i became worried because I just started my nursing my nursing school and in the nursing school you have like 20 days in a year to become sick and they are doing an operation and I was so worried maybe now I'm going to have more sick days than ever and I, because I was working in a, I was a, I was working as a nurse student I was told not to go to school until my wound is covered and healed because of those infections you know anyway let's go to the point of the operation right so the next three days i was booked for an operation and i was fully prepared and i went by the way alone nobody no i didn't go with any friend that day i went alone for the operation but i remember my friend girlfriend was always there with me when i went to the hospital she took me that day now here comes the worst part my tumor was not on this part of the breast but it was in my nipple inside inside the nipple where the milk or this thing comes from that's where my nipple my tumor had uh, hidden inside so after doing all those scans they came about 10 doctors guys 10 doctors you know they were coming and taking my breast they put there they put here they were looking for a place where they can mark so that they can do the operation Guys, do you know they were inserting um, a met, what do you call a tumor? They were inserting a, an object inside my breast without any medicine because they could not find where it's supposed to be cut. They were, about, they were supposed to mark where they're going to cut on the operation room. And because it was hidden in the nipple, they had to take a, what do you call it? They had to take a nail. Can you imagine I was just standing there they told me they have to take something like a nail they dipped it inside my breast and then they pushed that i think they were pushing the tumor in front so that they can know where to mark to cut when they are operating me guys they they pushed that tumor that nail inside i was really really crying that was the worst thing i ever experienced in my life you know I was really play, playing about this thing i was not even careful but when the doctor wanted to, uh, to do this operation it was the most painful experience i ever had someone taking the nail and putting it inside there and pushing it pushing it pushing it they did that almost like three times guys i really cried and then they said finally we have found where we can we can cut now we can we can take her to the operation room i was to be operated at 9 a.m but because of that process of they couldn't find the way they're supposed to cut because it was hidden in the nipple the operation took place i think around 1 pm it was so stressful for them guys i don't know what that devil wanted with my breast but thank god the doctors found the way to remove it with just 23 years guys imagine 23 years if i was in kenya what would have happened i just thank god i'm in germany by the way so 
uh, they did the operation and and then everything was fine i just found myself in another room vomiting after like i don't know many hours i was just vomiting and i was asking myself where i was you know because uh, they did operation i think now the side effects of the medicine or, or the that thing that they gave me was the one making me to vomit that's how i found out i was having breast tumor and for you to find out you can just be taking examining your breast at home if you don't feel any pain just go for screenings even if it's one year one one times in a year just go for it even if it's twice in a year if you can go for it guys i was never going for those things and when i went the doctor was just touching me and said everything is normal but remember my tumor was hidden in my nipple inside so i will advise you you go for all those things because you might delay there and something is really growing in your in your breast or in your cervix so it's better you go for all those checkups right now i'm okay i'm doing fine i thank god and i pray that if you're listening to this video you go to any screening soon and if you don't have money you can contact maureen waitito on our instagram page she has a doctor who is willing to do that screen for anyone for free so guys don't fail to go and just know your status you know just make sure everything here is clean everything down there is clean and you're gonna live long i just thank god i'm alive you know so guys that was our video thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and to hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever i update a new video thank you thank you thank you now penda sana don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you forgot to watch the like the latest video that i posted last time you are free to go and watch through this video on the comment section thank you so much guys bye bye